People can tell me all they want to. Well, I love Jesus. Yeah, okay, well, I want to I want to see your attendance. Okay? Because if you can't be committed to the natural things, how can you be committed to the spiritual things? So anyway, that's my introduction tonight. God bless you all that are here from Facebook. God bless you. Thank God you're joining us tonight. You're not backslidden. Amen. You know, there's some people that could be here and they're not here, you know. There's no reason they can't be here. And uh, I'm stressing it again. Unless you have a good reason for not being here on Wednesday and sometimes on Monday, because prayer is, is really important, um, you know, if you're not going to be consistent, you can't be on the worship team. Sorry. That's just the way it's, just, it's always been that way. I know there's certain circumstances people have talked to me about, and that's okay. That arrangement's okay. But if you're under, just sitting home watching um, the Three Stooges or, you know, watching, you know, one of your favorite shows on, on Wednesday night, uh, that don't cut it. So, um, again, um, you know, some, some pastors are really stricter than me. Okay? Uh, you can't have any ministry in the church if you don't attend those services that they have and pay your tithes. That's right. You know, uh, so, um, now, you know, we have people that are armed, so we're going to be um, taking offerings a little differently from now on. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> Vicky's like, amen. Well, we've been talking about the New World Order, and um, I don't know if you've seen the uh, president last night give his uh, speech. I thought he did a good job, okay? But they twisted everything he said and said he, ba he banged on, you know, today when they had the meeting, he banged on the desk. And, he, and they said he didn't do that, you know. So, you know, uh, pathological liars. Okay. So anyway, uh, it's all part of the last days. It's all part, you know, when the, the good is going to be really challenged by the Antichrist spirit. First John says that there are already, in his time, that spirit of Antichrist was already prevalent in his time. Can you imagine now that we're 2,000 years or so more, how prevalent that spirit of Antichrist is here? A lot of people think they have to wait for the Antichrist to get here. No, no, no. This is all building up for him to come. And then when he brings his message of peace and he brings his message of restoration, and the false signs, wonders, and miracles, people are going to get all caught up in that stuff. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to be deceived. So uh, we've been talking about the New World Order, and we've been talking about, um, you know, what's happening in the world today. We've been talking about, um, you know, AI, robots. You know, I call it alternative intelligence, <laughs> but it's artificial intelligence. Um, and how that's affecting our lives. And the other day I was just sitting there and God spoke to my spirit. I believe it was him. Spoke to my spirit and said, what about the automated automobiles? Okay, this new 5G that's coming out now. Okay, you're going to start seeing it on TV. You're already seeing it with AT&T and stuff. This 5G networking and all stuff. Well, 5G, what it is is, the 3G and the, and the 4G, and I'm just kind of giving you a little summary of what, I wanted, what he was trying to tell me, is today, if you ever been somewhere and you lose signal, okay, because what happens, it has to beam up and then beam back down to where you are. And sometimes if you're in a hidden spot, it can't reach you, okay? But what 5G does is it sets up all these little, like, pods all over the place. So what happens is, is that it bounces off the pod and it can actually bounce off your car and give you the signal. So no matter where you go and no matter where you travel, you have the 5G uh, new technology and capability of receiving that signal almost anywhere. Very interesting, right? So I was thinking, and, and, and when, when the Lord spoke that, I said, what about cars? He says, what are, why are they doing that? Why are they... You know, the cars that drive themselves, you know, you sit in the back seat. I ain't trusting that. And, and I'm only going to tell you the reason why. Because if you're a, if you're a, proponent, a proponent of righteousness, 
Who's to say they don't take your car over through the computers that they have and through Wi-Fi now and smash you into a wall and kill you? Okay, they can do that. So anyway, what's the one thing you think, <laughs> what's the one thing you think that the world system is trying to do with these automated automobiles? What's the one thing you think they're trying to get you What's one of the reasons why you think? Yes. I <laughs> run while you can. Takes away your autonomy. That's a, that's a very good point. Well, what the Lord spoke to me is, is this, is that and of course, a car like that is artificial intelligence because it's using, okay, computers and knowledge of the road and the, the download of the, um, the GPSs to navigate through cities and towns. That's why you might see like a little uh, car going around with an antenna on it and stuff like that, and it's going through all the neighborhoods. It's actually mapping that area out for further use. Well, the one thing that the Lord spoke to me was this, and, I, and then it kind of made sense. He said, they're, they're doing this technology now and putting it out there to get people to trust. Because if you're sitting in the back seat, my friend, you have a lot of trust going on. You're trusting the technology. You're trusting the artificial intelligence. So as I read last week, uh, in, in Revelation where it says, and he gave power of the image to speak. Well, if you're trusting AI now, if you can build up a trust and that it gets you from point A to point B safel, safely, it's all an underlying message, I believe. That's, that's what I believe. You don't have to believe that, but that's what I believe. I believe they're doing that. So what I want to talk about tonight, and I kind of mentioned it last week a little bit, about the Antichrist and who it could possibly be. You know, there's, there's different thoughts. Some, some thought it was Obama. <laughs> I did too for a little bit there. Um, <laughs> some thought it might be Trump. And to be honest with you, I thought about that too. And some thought it was, back in the 40s, it was Hitler. You know, how he went after the Jews and everything. Um, so there's been different um, um, individuals that people began to think, maybe this is him. Okay. Um, but I wanted to uh, assure all of you that you have nothing to be afraid of. Right? You have nothing to be afraid of because God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. Okay? So, you know, so what? They cut your head off. So what? They kill you. So what? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Right? You have nothing to worry about. Some of you are going to maybe pass on before that. You know, every person is born to die. Except the last generation that will be here when the rapture comes. Amen? Okay, open up your Bibles. If you have your Bibles, I hope you do because you're at Bible study. Um, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Chapter two. And we're going to start with verse verse one. But before we do, I just want to open in prayer. Father, thank you. I pray for your Holy Spirit's enlightenment. God, I pray that you would speak what you want spoken to tonight. 
We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Father. And Lord, you're giving us this information so that we can not be afraid, but we can be ready, prepared, so that when we see these things happening, your word says, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Verse 1 says, now we beseech you, brethren. In other words, that's almost like we beg you. Please listen to what I'm saying. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, you have to understand that they lived in the, in the time where they believed Christ was coming back right then. They said, he's coming back. That's they. Okay. So, and there was those that were saying he was coming back. You know, people have said that for years. The Jehovah Witness in 1914 went, sold everything they had, went up to a mountain because they believed Jesus was going to come back, and all they heard was crickets. Okay. Then we've had other people that had come forward and came through, you know, back in 1988, 88 reasons why Jesus is coming on whatever date it was on, in 1988. Um, and then we had that guy, Camp, that came along there, and he said that, you know, Jesus was coming, and they fixed dates. Nobody knows the day or the hour, okay? But you can know the season. He said you can know it when it's even at the door. And I think I gave that metaphor to you sometime. When you're home and you get this sense like someone's standing at your door and you open it and someone's there, it's almost like that. It's like it's a, there's a discernment there. And that's the other thing that I've been noticing is that Christians, I was with uh, Pastor Mark today uh, up in Warwick, and I, we were having a good time. We fellowship for about two and a half hours, something like that. Uh, great brother in the Lord and, and really loves Jesus. And um, we were talking, and you know, the thing is, is that even some, some people that are in ministry don't have discernment. And I'm, I'm noticing that people can't discern certain things. And they've been with the Lord for a while. But they just can't discern things. And they're doing things that are not according to the Bible. You know, and you and like like James Robeson on that picture I showed you, him and his wife, Betty and, and, and James Robeson. I would have never expected that from him. But see, that's why you can't keep your eye on leaders. OK, even me, you can't keep your eye on me. OK. Keep your eye on Jesus. OK, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I stop following Christ, don't be following me. Okay, because I'll probably rob you or something. So he says, uh, as the day of Christ is at hand, he said, verse three, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? What day? Christ's return for that day shall not come except, there's, there's an exception. So there's going to be a clue, if you will. There's going to be a definite way to be able to tell we're in the last days. And he says, except there come a falling away. Now, Timothy talks about falling away, giving heed to seducing spirits and teachings of devils. So we understand that there's a falling away. But that doesn't mean churches won't be full. There's going to be a falling away from biblical truth. And they're going to give heed to fables and stories. And isn't that what you hear on TV? Do 
getting away. There's a falling away from the truth. Falling away from the things that we held, the convictions that we held, the things that we once called sin, we're now calling acceptable. In the Christian realm, and I'll say it that way because you, you can be a Christian if you go to church. You don't necessarily have to be born again. That's what the thinking is. But you cannot be a Christian unless you're born again. I'm sorry. That's what the Bible says. You can be a religious Christian, a denominational Christian, but you can't not be a true biblical Christian unless you're born again. Thank you. And so this falling away, and I'm telling you, you've got people going to churches, and they're not saved. They're lifting their hands, they're singing, they're dancing, they're shouting. They're not saved. They haven't been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the light. They're, they're Christian by name only and association to a denomination or a building they go to. That doesn't make you a Christian. So there's going to be a falling away. And that's not only people in the congregation. That's ministers who are ministering and giving up the convictions of truth for the sake of success, for the sake of being successful to the people and being people pleasers and not being a God pleaser. There's going to be a falling away. So as you see these things, he says, the Lord's coming is not coming except there be a falling away first. Now let me ask you a question. Do you see the church changing? I showed you the videos last week, and the week before. I showed you the videos of uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Charismatic ministries. There, there were over 70 ministers that went. Was that me? Yeah. There were 70 ministers that went to, to visit the Pope. And I'm sorry. You've got people on television. I'll say his name, Jack Van Impey, who says the Pope is saved. Now, here's a question. Now, I know there's a lot of people who might get mad at me, but that's okay. I'm used to it. How can someone be the leader and take the name of vicar? You know what that means? Instead of Christ. He is the vicar of Christ. He is instead of Christ. He is the head of Roman Catholicism. His word is above Scripture. How can someone lead people into idolatry? They're not even saved. They believe in being saved by baptism. Baptismal regeneration. How can they be saved in a biblical sense? So anyway, there's a great falling away. There, it's all setting up for this ecumenical movement for all of the churches to come together under the spirit of unity. But I say this, and I mean this with all my heart, you cannot have unity without biblical truth. You can't have, the Bible says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, not the unity of the churches, but the unity of the Spirit. Why? Because He is a Spirit of truth. Not perception, not what people think, but truth. So we see that the law is not going to come, or don't be soon shaken at, you know, or fearful that the law is, come, is coming, okay? Except, there be a falling away first. And we're seeing it. 
How many people do you know that was part of this church that no longer come here anymore? I could tell you stories of people that have been here, okay, and they left here, and they're backslidden. Some, some have even gone into homosexuality. And these were people that have been, were Christians for a long time, supposedly. Except there'd be a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. That man of sin is the Antichrist. The son of perdition. Now, Anybody know what the word perdition means? The word perdition means eternal damnation, utter destruction. When a person is called son of perdition, like Judas was, the connotation of that is that the person is in, in a unredeemable state. Unredeemable. Not going to be saved. In an unredeemable state. There's no desire for salvation. There's no desire for Christ. There's no desire for God. So if one of the characteristics is that he's been called the son of perdition, then there must be a reason. There must be a reason he's called the son of perdition. There has to be some kind of characteristic that is prevalent, that can be seen. Are you seeing that spirit? Remember what John says, the spirit of Antichrist is alive back then? For there are many spirits of, of Antichrist already in this world. He said that. So what's the characteristic of that? Unredeemable. That spirit of unredeemable, eternal damnation is one of his characters, characteristics. What do you see in the attitude of people today when you tell them about Jesus? Oh, I don't need that. I don't want that. Why should I want that? I don't, I don't need that. I'm fine. And you're seeing more and more young people in the colleges that are being brainwashed through these professors that are atheists, agnostics, that spirit of Antichrist, and telling people that we don't need salvation. The New Age movement believe that we are our own salvation. That's what they say. We're, we're gods ourselves. So we see the prevalence of that spirit of Antichrist already existing in the world. Do you see it? If you don't, just turn on your TV and see some of the programs that you're seeing now. All super demonic, supernatural. Lucifer, this one, that one. 
magic. Everything. It's getting people ready to be, to be desensitized and to accept miracles. There's, a, there's one TV program, I don't remember the name of it, where this guy, he's doing miracles and people are getting healed. Jesus said there'll be lying signs and wonders, miracles. So if you're a miracle chaser and you see somebody that was blind, see, don't go running it. Test the spirit to see if it's of God. Who opposeth? Who opposeth? He opposes everything that is godly. That's another characteristic. He opposes the things that are godly. He opposes those things that are righteous. What are you seeing today, even in our own government? You're seeing the spirit of Antichrist. Why did you see people on their knees when they, the announcement was Trump won the won the uh, the presidency? There was a lady on her knees screaming, "No, no! Why? Why? Why?" You know, we laugh, but you know what? That person's sincere. And Rosie O'Donnell wanting to pay senators a million dollars apiece to vote a certain way. Why the opposition that this president has had since day one? And they don't care about principle or they don't care about working for the American people anymore. It's their ideology. And so they'll stick it to them any way, any time, any, and all of the CBS, ABC, NBC, all of the stations, except Fox. You turn it on, or Trump this, Trump that, Trump this, Trump that. They have no, you know why they have to do that? Because they have no way of fixing things. They don't have an agenda. They have nothing. It's absolutely crazy. That spirit of Antichrist is out there. Then this new Condo Condoleezza, whatever her name is, uh, what, what's her name, that new congresswoman, the young one? Yeah, C Cortez or, 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 or Bobos or whatever her name is. She says she wants to tax the rich. Now listen to this. 70%. Now, think about it for a moment. Now, I'm not a mathematician, okay? But just think about it. If every year they tax the millionaires 70%, how long is it going to be before they're not millionaires anymore? Then where are they going to get the money from? That's stupid. But their minds are blinded because they, they, they want to look, you know, it's my first time in Senate. I want to look important. Come on. It's all part of that antichrist spirit. They oppose, oppose, oppose. That's, that's the characteristic of him. He opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple. Wait a minute. There's no temple. That tells me that when the Antichrist comes, there's going to be a Jewish third temple. Why does there have to be a third temple? Anybody know? Why does there have to be a third temple? Okay, I'll tell you. There has to be a third temple because Jesus predicted there'd be one. In Matthew 24, he says, when you see the son of perdition, go into the temple and defile it. So we understand that he's going to go in the temple, he's going to defile it. 
and showing himself that he's God. I think Oprah Winfrey now has almost three or four million followers now in that um, Eka, Eka Tolle or whatever his name is, spiritual thing. They, they lead each other. Uh, they all get together on the Internet, and they, they all get into a, a, an, an unconscious state, you know, and, and they just, you know. And people are being deceived. I mean, just think about it. You know how many Christians practice yoga? They don't know the basis behind yoga. It's demonic. But they go, this is the excuse now. But I'm just telling you how people are losing their discernment. Oh, it's just exercise. I just do it as exercise. They're accepting things. That's, that's another characteristic. They're beginning to accept things to get you ready to accept him, the Antichrist. They're getting people duped so that they will eventually accept him. Now, notice what I said before. That day will not come except there be a coming, falling away. The day of the Lord coming. So, I believe we're out of here. But there may be signs or there may be, um, you know, like a preview. You know, like coming attractions? When you watch a movie, there's the trailer. You know, they call them trailers now. When I was a kid, they were coming attractions. And you see the coming attractions of a movie. It says, be out in September. And you go, oh, wow, I can't wait to see that movie in September. I believe there's coming attractions or there's trailers to when the Antichrist comes on the scene. He's not going to just pop on there. Hi, here I am. <laughs> no, there, he, he's going to, it's, it's already being worked into. It's already being uh, prepared for his entrance. So with that, with that, I have a video I want to share with you. It's about 30 minutes, so we should be out of here by 20 past. Okay? But I want you to, uh, and I want to say this first and foremost. I'm not saying that this person is the Antichrist, but it sure kind of looks like it's possible that he could be. And when you see the circumstances behind that, you might be going, hmm. You know, Jesus said this. There's nothing hidden that won't be revealed in the last days. And let me just, can I digress for one minute and tell you, I believe that's true about the temple because, you know, there's more and more proof and more and more archaeological proof that the temple wasn't on the mount that whether they say it is now, where the Dome of the Rock is. Many scholars today, because of archaeological discoveries, are saying that the temple mount was in the city of David where the threshing floor of Onan was. And if you read 2 Chronicles, I believe, chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, I think, it talks about that. So I'm going to show that video. I want you to pay attention because it's, it's filled with a lot of detail. Go ahead. Could Emmanuel Macron be the Antichrist? According to scripture, the greatest political leader in history, 
the man of lawlessness, a.k.a. the Antichrist, will arise from Europe to seek world domination and deceive countless people near the time of Christ's return. Somewhere at this very moment on planet Earth, the Antichrist is almost certainly alive, and there is much speculation about the identity of this Antichrist. Among the speculation, some of the more popular Antichrist candidates include Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, and Pope Francis. Yet out of all the Antichrist candidates who have come and gone, Emmanuel Macron, who became President of France on the 14th of May 2017, has generated more end-time buzz than any other world leader that I know. This is because Macron seems to fit the exact characteristics of the Antichrist in so many ways. 1. The Antichrist will rise suddenly from obscurity. Daniel 7, verse 8 and 8, verse 9. Many news reports speak of Macron's meteoric rise from obscurity, appearing out of nowhere. A year before the French election, Macron had no political party and no previous electoral experience. Two years before, he was a virtual nobody. Further still, France has been in chaos from all the terrorist attacks and the far-right front national candidate, Marine Le Pen, seemed the only answer to the madness. And yet, Emmanuel Macron won a landslide victory over Marine Le Pen in the French election. At age 39, he's the youngest president France has ever had, and not since 1958 and Charles de Gaulle has a French president ever won such a powerful majority, taking 351 out of 577 seats. Macron's rise has been nothing short of meteoric. It is, in fact, unprecedented. 2. The number 666 will be related to the Antichrist and is possible to be computed. Revelation 13, verse 18. According to Dr. E. W. Bullinger, when the name of the Antichrist is known, its gematria will doubtless be found to be the number 666. There are 36 6 times 6 total characters in Macron's name, 32 letters, 1 dash, 3 spaces. If you give each character a value of its position and calculate the sum, you get 666. 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to plus 36 equals 666. Furthermore, Macron won the French presidency by 66.06% .06 of the vote and assumed office on May 14, 2017, Israel's 69th anniversary as a reborn nation. What a coincidence. 3. The Antichrist will claim to be God and is worshipped. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4. Macron has already claimed he will rule like the Roman god Jupiter in homage to the highest pagan god in the Roman and Greek pantheons, the king of all the gods in ancient Roman religions. In open reference to this, Macron's own nickname in France now is Jupiter. Other names given to him include Jesus Macron, Europe's Savior, and the new Louis XIV or the Sun King Reborn. Macron seems to adore the attention, even jestingly allowing people to draw attention to the origin of his own name, Emmanuel, which of course means in Hebrew, God is with us. In fact, all parts of his name call him some sort of God or Jesus, except his last name, meaning a written or printed mark. Considering that Macron's parents are atheists, isn't it a bit odd that they named their child like this? This is the meaning of his full name. Emmanuel Jean-Michel Frédéric Macron. Emmanuel, God with us. John, gift from God. Michael, who is like God. Frédéric, peaceful ruler. Prince of Peace is the title for Jesus Christ. See Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. And Macron, a written or printed mark. Revelation 13 tells us the mark is the name of the beast or Antichrist. Coincidence or incredible play on words? 
Coincidentally, Macron's name in the English gematria totals to 888, Jesus in Greek gematria, also causing some to see him as a Jesus-type figure. And he was born on 21 of December 1977, which is the winter solstice, or the shortest day of the year. The reason December 24th and 25th were picked for Jesus' birthday is because those were considered to be the winter solstice, or the shortest day of the year. Technically, being born on Christmas, and with the name of Emmanuel, Macron could falsely claim that he is the fulfillment of the prophecy given in Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. 4. The Antichrist will be a prince, Daniel 7, verse 8, and 9, verse 26. Unlike most European and Western leaders, Macron is technically a prince. Macron became co-prince of Andorra, a small principality located between France and Spain, at the same time he assumed office. The remaining royalty in Western and Northern Europe have little or no power and are essentially just figureheads, but this particular royal has rocketed to power since he also holds the highest executive office in the country. Because of his party's sweep of legislative elections, some articles are even calling him a monarch who can rule by decree. 5. The Antichrist will be of Roman descent, rising out of the revived Roman Empire, the European Union. Daniel 9, verse 26. Macron is a citizen of Europe with Roman ancestry through both sides of his family, and his country, France, is part of the revived Roman Empire, EU. Macron is working on uniting Europe, which will be a return of this power and is currently leader of one of the two most powerful countries in the EU. 6. The Antichrist will be a sexual pervert and show no regard for the desire of women. Daniel 11:37. Strangely, young Emmanuel Macron, at age 15, fell in love with Bridget Trogno, a married teacher at his school, who at the time was 39. Despite her initial rejection of him and the fact that she was already a married mother of three, Macron did as he pleased and began an affair with Trogno as a teenage boy nonetheless. The desire of women is to have a family and children. Macron said he doesn't want kids of his own. There are also rumors he's homosexual and has had affairs with a few men. Macron openly supports gay marriage. 7. I expect the Antichrist to be an extremely charismatic leader who is seemingly friendly and charming when he deceives people. Macron is young, good-looking, and charming, according to many articles. Haritz News had this to say about Macron. When he takes the stage at rallies, you can feel Emmanuel Macron's messianic dimensions, the audience's near-sexual ecstasy, his followers' blind faith, his speechwriter's evangelical messages. People yearn to get a picture with him, speak with him, touch him. Macron's friends describe how the president is a grand seducteur, a man who uses his prodigious gifts to get whatever he wants. Macron, he explains, is a polymath, a person who is able to acquire significant expertise in a variety of different subjects to quickly become an expert in them, and that he uses his ability to ingratiate himself with others. The Financial Times, quoting a source who has known Macron for years, detailed how he seduces everyone and then he kills. The FT source says Macron is always charming, especially with enemies and those hostile to him. During the election, for example, Macron took particular pleasure in always trying to meet his opponents, even the most hostile, face to face. He did this, so the source says, because he was and is so confident of his own charm and in his ability to win people over. 8. I see the Antichrist to be a clever psychopath who is ruthless towards others behind the scenes. Daniel 8, verse 23. Macron's leadership style is beginning to emerge, and it is ruthless. 
For instance, after President Francois Hollande made Macron a government minister, Macron abandoned Hollande and ultimately took his job. Macron then purged three well-established and senior ministers in the first few days of his administration. Macron has wasted no time in also lecturing and greatly offending Eastern and Central European leaders on what he perceives are the collective failure to accept adequate amounts of refugees from the Middle East into their nations. Macron has told French politicians, both left and right, they'll have to play by his rules if they want to be in his camp. Back in June, the whole world witnessed France's president publicly humiliating a teenager for calling him Manu. French President Emmanuel Macron, contrary to his public image, Sophie Petter says, can be very ruthless when he wants to be. Macron's consistently scornful approach to the normal rules and boundaries of life has led leading European psychiatrist Adriano Sagatori, who has studied Macron extensively, to actually declare him as a potential psychopath. 9. The Antichrist will be a globalist. Revelation 13, verse 17. Beginning his rise to prominence as a person who addresses some of the world's major problems through diplomacy, he will appear to be the savior of the world. Revelation 6, verse 2. Emmanuel Macron is the darling of globalism. He is like its very embodiment. Macron is such a globalist that he has stated that the French culture does not exist. One prime example of Macron addressing world problems is his role of leadership in the climate change global farce. Interestingly, climate change, formerly known as global warming, has always been considered the vehicle by which the globalists will dominate and control the world's economies. Macron has already been successful in France by representing all that is wrong in Europe. Socialism, no borders, immigration madness, Islam exaltation, and godlessness. As a result, Macron has been called Jesus Macron, Europe's savior and sun king reborn. Last year, the Rothschild magazine even portrayed Macron in a Christ-like walking on water photo with the headline, Europe's savior. 10. The Antichrist will be the most arrogant person of all time. Daniel 11, verse 36, and 8, verse 25. Since he will have the audacity to claim that he is God and will demand the world to worship him, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4, Macron's claim that he will rule like the Roman god Jupiter is, in effect, a statement that he wants to rule above every god. Daniel 11, verse 36. Macron has been criticized for taking an arrogant approach, such as when he didn't conduct the traditional French president's Bastille Day TV interview because his thoughts are too complex for such a forum. Leading European psychiatrist Adriano Sagatori states, like all psychopaths, he believes in his higher purpose. Macron does not love France and will not fight for the French people, Sagatori continues. Macron loves only himself. The paradox is that he appears normal, but we have a case of full-blown narcissism. By the way, the impression of Macron is not an isolated one. It seems to be echoed by many other people, especially those close to him. Even Emmanuel Macron's wife thinks he is arrogant. 11. The ultimate source of the Antichrist's power is Satan. Revelation 13, verse 2. And Satan has some supernatural abilities. John 12, verse 31, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, and Ephesians 2, verse 2. Thus, I expect the Antichrist to possess some unusual or unique traits. A reporter followed Macron for a week and noticed some unique traits he displayed, documenting them in this article. These include not breaking and sweltering heat possessing relentless energy, which he is renowned for, being able to look at someone and convince them to trust him with his penetrating blue eyes, being able to recite perfect Greek, and playing both sides in a bid for a newspaper. Macron's former classmates reckon he was not like the others. 
As a teenager and young adult, Macron was always hanging around older people, having dinners with his teachers, avoiding the advances of girls his own age, no regard for the desire of women, Daniel 11, verse 37, according to his former classmates. 12. The Antichrist will rule a ten-nation confederacy which will rise out of a revived Roman Empire, the European Union. Daniel 2, verses 31 to 35, 40 through 45, 7, verses 7 and 8, and 19 through 24. Revelation 13, verses 1 and 2, 17, verses 3 and 7, as well as 12 and 16. Interestingly, Macron has been pushing to bring together a core ten-nation coalition of the willing, EU army, to prepare European armed forces to take action together in emergencies, and to bind Britain into military cooperation as it leaves the EU. Just this week, a coalition of ten European militaries ready to defend the continent's borders has been unveiled in Paris, just days after Emmanuel Macron called for a real European army. 13. The Antichrist will have a very strong military. Revelation 13, verse 2, Daniel 7, verse 6. Macron's own country, France itself, has the first or second most powerful military in the EU, given that it, along with the UK, are the only two countries in the EU that possess nuclear arsenals. In fact, the guillotine, and perhaps main weapon that the Antichrist will use to kill martyrs during the Great Tribulation, Revelation 20, verse 4, was invented in France and used extensively in French history. 14. I expect the Antichrist to be fluent in at least a few widely spoken languages, including the English language. Macron does indeed speak English fluently and has even given a number of interviews in English with the British media. It is often joked that Macron speaks better English than Americans, including their president, Donald Trump. I do find it interesting that Macron consistently speaks the most common language of the day. A vast number of Europeans speak or at least understand English as a second language. Thus, is it any surprise that Macron would abandon the use of his native tongue in favor of a common language? Here's a video of Macron speaking fluent English in an interview. Although growth was a little bit better in the third quarter of this year in France than people expected, nonetheless the economy is basically stagnating. How worried are you? Reasonably worried, I would say. I mean, we need more growth, for sure. What we need is to create a momentum to trigger trust for corporates and households in our country, to restore trust with our partners in the Eurozone and in the EU, and to trigger investments on the member state side when they, are, when they can afford such investments, and at the European and the Euro Eurozone side. I mean, you've talked about the need to increase competition in certain industries, you've talked about the need to reduce red tape. Can you do this without a major conflict with the unions? I do believe we can do it because French people share the conviction that we have to reform the country. And even if we had some demonstrations, I would say, it's not a showstopper. But this is the sort of language we heard from the previous president, Monsieur Sarkozy, and most people would say he achieved very little in terms of reforming the economy. Why should people believe that it will be different this time? What we are building is precising a big reform program to open up a series of services and increase competition in terms of products and good markets, transportation and so on, and to open up and flexibilize labor market. So I think it's, it's new. Now you're making some tough cuts here. Could Germany be doing more to help you in this difficult phase? They are aiming to balance their budget next year. Is that a mistake on their part? You know, we are making cuts and reforms for ourselves first and not for everybody else. And Germany has to implement a policy which is good for Germany first and not to help us. That's the point. But 
we have to increase the coordination of our policies. But can and a Eurozone actually survive unless there is more coordination? No, we need more coordination, that's the point. Unemployment across the Eurozone remains dangerously high. How can you get growth up and persuade European people that the Eurozone isn't simply damaging to their prosperity? That's a fair point. That's why we have to accelerate reform, to invest more and to increase integration at the Eurozone level. Because we are sacrificing a whole generation in a lot of countries. Because it's not acceptable to have a lot of countries with sometimes 30, 40, 50 percent of young people without employment. Spectacularly dangerous, isn't it? In the sense that if you look back at the last parliamentary elections for the European Parliament, a third of European people voted for parties who are opposed to the European Union. Unless you get growth up, the whole European project could fracture. OK, but growth will not come spontaneously. So what we have to do in order to have growth is a political project, a political willingness to reform, to invest, to create a new dynamic. So growth is not a spontaneous movement, except if uh, suddenly you discover oil or I don't know what. And I can tell you, if you define a project, if you define a common willingness to go further, to progress for your economy and your people, growth will come back. Now, there is a sort of related point here. France has been critical of the industrial scale tax avoidance measures that were introduced in Luxembourg. Jesse, can you see if you can, can you forward that a little bit? Because this is just the interview part. On that line, on that line there, you can see. Go back a little bit. See if you can go. Uh, okay. Yeah, right there. Okay. And the PA. Macron is interested in being a significant factor in the attempts to renew talks between Israel and the PA, and the French are already working on their own peace plan. Apparently, if U.S. President Donald Trump does not present his Israel-Palestinian peace plan next month, Macron will issue a proposal of his own. 16. Betraying the Jewish State the Antichrist will sought the destruction of the Jews, Daniel 11, verses 40 and 41. Interestingly, just a few days ago, French Jews reacted in horror at reports President Emmanuel Macron will honor Marshal Philippe Pétain, the disgraced Nazi collaborator who authorized the deportation of tens of thousands of Jews to death camps. 17. The Antichrist will be smart economically, controlling the world's economy. Revelation 13, verses 16 and 17. Also, some think the Antichrist will be a Rothschild or one of their puppets, a must for all Antichrists with the love of global financial domination. Macron is very smart economically, having worked for the Rothschilds Banking Corporation. In 2008, Macron became an investment banker with Rothschild and, surprisingly, was promoted from an entry-level position with the Rothschild banking system to a partner after just two years. In just one meeting, Macron convinced the Rothschild banker to make him a partner within three hours of talking to him, which the banker said was unprecedented. He made a $10 billion deal there, earning his nickname the Mozart of Finance and has a net worth of already $32 million, despite saying he's not a millionaire in his presidential run documentary. In 2012, Macron left Rothschild to become Deputy Secretary General at the ILSE for two years, then was quickly promoted to Minister of Economy and Finance. Ex-Minister and Senior Civil Servant Jean-Pierre Joyer told Macron at the time he took the job as Economy Minister, you're the boss now. Macron was indeed a financial genius. 18. The Antichrist is also a politician. Revelation 17, verses 11 and 12. Macron's now arguably the most important political leader in Europe today, aside from Angela Merkel. After creating his own party en marche, named after his own initials, then winning 350 out of 577 seats in the French Parliament, all within one year of its creation, 
and now exploring creating his own party for the European Union and even his own political school. Macron's considered a political genius. 19. The Antichrist will change times and the law. Daniel 7, verse 25. Ever since Macron took office, he's been completely changing many labor laws in France, which have caused multiple violent protests, and wants to change Sunday work times. 20. The Antichrist eventually forms his one-world religion, Revelation 17 and 18. There's a strong case for this one-world religion being the Roman Catholic Church. If this is the case, I expect the Antichrist to have some sort of link with Catholicism. Interestingly, Emmanuel Macron was born to non-religious liberal parents, but decided he wanted to be baptized a Catholic at the age of 12, despite his parents' misgivings. He then received a Jesuit education until his last year of high school. In June, Macron visited the Pope at the Vatican, headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church, and was granted an unusually long meeting behind closed doors with Pope Francis, his longest meeting with a head of state, in which they discussed migration issues, conflict in the Middle East, and the future unity of Europe. Secular France has a strict separation between church and state, enshrined in law in 1905. Yet, in a speech to Catholics this year, Macron said he wanted to repair the bond between church and state. 21. The Antichrist has no regard for any god, Daniel 11, verse 37, but shall honor the god of fortresses, Daniel 11, verse 38. Being a secular, lapsed Catholic, Macron gives no regard to any god, as in Daniel 11, 37. However, Macron has claimed he wants to rule like the Roman god Jupiter, and coincidentally, the title God of Fortresses, Daniel 11.38, belongs to none other than the Roman god Jupiter, whose Greek equivalent is Zeus. Macron also wants his administration to be Jupiterian. Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a foreshadow of the coming Antichrist, Daniel 8 verses 9 through 14, 23 and 25, 11, 21 through 35, acted as though he was Jupiter, and even erected a statue of Jupiter that foreshadowed the future abomination of desolation. Here's something else rather interesting. A general under Antiochus IV Epiphanes was named Ptolemy Macron. Coincidence? Also foreshadowing the Antichrist. 22. The ultimate source of the Antichrist's power is Satan. Revelation 13, verse 2. So I expect the Antichrist to be surrounded by demonic symbolism. The demonic symbolism around Macron is very troubling. Macron walked out to the European Union national anthem, Ode to Joy, a song about Jesus, in which the lyrics, unknowingly, are actually about the entering of the shrine of a pagan goddess and the uniting of all men in brotherhood by the power of magic. Instead of the French national anthem, when he made his presidential victory speech. The symbol of a pyramid and an all-seeing eye has long been associated with evil groups, such as the Illuminati and the Freemasons, who have wanted to destroy the evangelical church and to have Satan worshipped instead. Macron celebrated his victory at the Louvre Museum right in front of the glass pyramid composed of 666 pieces, with what looks like the lit-up eyes watching over him from the top. To top the night off, he held up his arms in a V-shape that, with the pyramid behind him, made the Masonic crest. Macron has given another speech on a stage shaped like the Masonic Unfinished Pyramid, as well as a stage that is lit up in the shape of a cross. In his debate with Marianne Le Pen, Macron flashed the 666 hand signal many times, even on both hands at the same time. On other occasions, Macron has held up the satanic horned hand symbol. There was even a photo of Emmanuel Macron having horns on his head on Time magazine's cover. Was this deliberate? I don't know. Could Macron be the Antichrist? The Bible makes clear that the man of lawlessness, a.k.a. the Antichrist, 
will not be revealed until the restrainer, the Holy Spirit indwelt church, is removed. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 and 7 and 8. So no one will know for sure who the Antichrist is until the rapture occurs. That being said, we can speculate, and it certainly looks like a possibility, especially given the shortness of time. While I am not willing to state that he is the Antichrist, Macron certainly seems to be a prototype. Thus, the point of the article is not to identify who the Antichrist is, but to warn those here for tribulation. Also, whether Macron is the Antichrist or not, it is a guarantee that Macron will rise to a prominent position in European leadership. Amir Sarfati says of Macron, I believe that in Emmanuel Macron's case, I can very clearly say that we are watching a young West European leader who was groomed by the One World Order gang for this powerful position. I am not talking about grooming him to be the Antichrist, but definitely toward leadership of Europe. Interesting, huh? We don't know. But again, we're living in the last days. So how much more should we be on fire for Jesus? How much more should we put Jesus first in everything? Amen. Amen. It, it, it really, and I, I, I implore the people that are watching, be right with God. Make sure you're right. Put God first. Doesn't he say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? You know, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Your actions will back your words. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you for tonight, Lord. Thank you that, Lord, as we see these things coming. Your word, give us, your word gives us hope. It says, when you see these things happening, look up, for your redemption is drawing nigh. Jesus is coming back. It's not very popular today. The rapture is not very popular today. But I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to be biblically correct. And I want to say that I believe the rapture is going to happen and could happen at any moment. Be ready. You won't have time to get ready. Be ready. So, Father, be with us as we travel. Surround us with your Holy Spirit and protect us with your holy angels, Father, as we go our separate ways tonight. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.